Okay, welcome back to part two. We are on the back of the notes now. We're gonna do a couple of examples. Now example one, you see is totally blank. What we're gonna do is draw a, what we call a rectangular prism, or in this case, it'll be basically like a cube. So to do this, drawing three dimensionally is actually very important in geometry and it does take some practice. So don't get frustrated if your cube is not great. But I start by drawing a square, and then from three of these points, I'm going to draw a slanted segment. I'm gonna to try to draw those the same way, because then what I do is I connect across, and then I connect down, and there we go. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a dotted line from this back point. I'm gonna draw a dotted line from here, from the front left, and I'm going to draw a dotted line across to the back, bottom right. And what the dotted line represents is the part of this three-dimensional figure that technically we can't see it. This is the back. This is the left side here. This is the back side, and then this is the um, right side, and then here is the bottom. So technically we can't see them, we know they exist, so by drawing the dotted lines, it gives us the three-dimensional look. Now I'm gonna label the points. The top, I'm gonna say H, I, J, K, and the bottom, I will say L, M, N, and O. Okay, now, a little bit more vocabulary here. The points, are actually called, we have eight points, and the name for those is vertices. Each of them is a vertex. So we have eight vertices, H, I, J, K, that's four, and then L, M, N, O is four more. Now, how many line segments do we have? Technically, we don't have lines because they don't continue, they stop. Okay, so what we have are called segments. In the top, we have one, two, three, four line segments. In the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, so that's eight. Then, don't forget, we have four segments that connect vertically up and down, that connect the top and the bottom. So we have 12 segments, or what we call edges. And then we also have, when you look at the planes here, the flat surfaces, we have the top and bottom, that's two. We have the front and the back, that's two more. And then we have the left side and the right side. So we have six planes, or what we call faces. So here's points, segments, line segments, and planes. And when we're talking about three-dimensional figures, we use vertices, edges, and faces for that. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's talk a little bit about some of the intersections that happen. If I ask you for the intersection of, I'll call it segment. Now I'm gonna use segment here. So I'm not gonna talk about the lines because it doesn't continue. HI and IJ. Segment HI intersects line IJ, where? Now these are two segments. What I like to do here is to trace this. Here's HI, here's IJ. Intersection is where they meet, where they touch. Well, that would be right here at point I. So they meet in one place, so it's just I. What about segment HI intersecting segment NJ? HI and NJ, here's HI. Here's NJ, hmm, HI and NJ, those don't touch at all. Now even if I continued, this would go off like this, this is going up and down, those are never actually going to meet each other right there. So the intersection is none, the symbol for that is a zero with a slash through it, that's called the empty set. The set of solutions is empty. There's nothing that works for that. So it's possible that these two things don't cross. They don't touch. So that would be none. Now what about planes? What about JKH 
and L O K. Remember, when we name a plane, we use three points for that. No commas between them. Now I'm going to trace these out. I'm going to use some colors here. J K H is this. Now the plane, we don't put the fourth point. We only use three points to name a plane. But the fourth point here is I. So the plane is this surface here. It's the top. How about L-O-K? L-O-K is part of the front. That fourth point is H here. L-O-K. So what is the intersection of J-K-H and L-O-K? What's the intersection of the top and the front? Intersection is where they touch. Well, again, if I trace this out, notice that the only part that has green and red is H to K. So they both have point H. They both have point K, and they both have this whole line segment right here, all the points on here. Now, we can't, you, you can try to put an infinite number of points on this segment and name them, but that's going to take you forever. So the way that we say this, the intersection is H and K, and by putting a segment bar, it means all the points also in between them. So it's this whole thing. So the intersection of the top and the front is this segment right here, HK. All right, let's take number two. For the picture below, name the following. So we're gonna talk about some intersection, coplanar, non-coplanar, some of the vocabulary. Now, first, let's take a look at this picture. Here's your plane. It looks like in the plane we have four points, X, E, Y, P. Now notice there are other letters there's this kind of cursive, this italic B, lowercase. That means that's this line right here. That's another way to name the line. You also have this uppercase cursive R. That is the name of the plane itself. So B and R are not points. Line, plane. You have another point here, Z. And Z, you'll notice, is not inside this parallelogram. So what's happening here, Z is actually above the plane. You have to think three-dimensionally again. And it's kind of tricky in the video because this is two-dimensional. This line is going down. It's starting, if you think of point Z, okay, if you think of my finger here as point Z, what it's doing is it's coming down, it hits Y, and then it comes out the bottom. Okay, so Z is not a part of the plane. All right, so that's kind of what's going on. You see the dotted line here? This is the part that's below the plane that technically we can't see. This is the part above the plane. And it hits right here at point Y. So, part A, the intersection of line B and line YZ. Line B is here. And line YZ is here. Now, they do touch. They touch right there at point Y. So the intersection of those two lines is Y. What is the intersection of line B and, now this is plane R. Here's the plane. Here's line B. Where do they touch? Well, they both have point E. They both have point Y. But they also have all the other unnamed points because wherever this line goes, it is inside plane R. Every point on this line touches the plane. So the line itself is the answer. The intersection of line B and R is line B. Or you can just use the lowercase letter B. Okay, so in this case, the whole line intersects the plane. Name four coplanar points. Coplanar means in the same plane. Well, we have four points in the plane, X, E, Y, P. Name four non-coplanar. That means four points that are not in the same plane. Now, there's only one point that's not in plane R, and it's Z. So we have to use Z, and then we can use any three of these. I'll just say X, E, Y. And again, what it means is that 
as a group, there is no plane that can contain all four of these at the same time. Yeah, it can contain X, E, and Y, but we can't put Z in there, it's not gonna work. All right, the last one, the intersection of line Y, Z and plane X, E, P. Now line Y, Z is this line here. Okay, I'm, I'll put this in red. Plane X, E, P. Well, we can name a plane with three points. That's actually the same thing as plane R. This is the same plane. So that's really plane R right there. Okay, so where did they touch? Now this line, remember, point Z is above the plane somewhere. It's up here, if you think three-dimensionally. So what happens is the line's gonna come down, it's going to hit the plane right here at point Y, and then it's gonna come out the bottom. So in this case, the only place where these two, where the line and the plane intersect, where they touch, is point Y. This is a little bit tricky, thinking three-dimensionally. That's one of the things about geometry. But as you practice, it'll make more sense. All right, the last thing we're going to do here is a review of the coordinate plane. So plot the following ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. Well, ordered pair means x and y. There's an order to the numbers, where the x-axis is left and right. To the left is negative numbers. To the right is positive numbers. The y-axis is up and down. Down is negative, up is positive. Zero, zero for A is actually what we call the origin. Two comma three means x is two and y is three. So starting from the origin, x is positive two, that means right. Y is positive three, which means up. So there's point B. And I'm gonna label the point next to the point uh, label the point next to where I put the dot. So here's A, 0, 0, here's B. C is negative 4, negative 1. So X direction, negative 4, that's left 4. The Y direction, negative 1, is down 1. There's C. 0, negative 4. X is 0. That means we don't go left or right. Y is negative 4. That's down 4. There's point D. E is 1 comma negative 3, that means right 1, down 3, negative 3, that's point E. F is 5 comma 0, so X is 5, that means we go right 5, that's positive. The Y value is 0, we don't go up or down, so there's 5, 0, there's F, and then G is negative 4, positive 4. So X is negative, that's left. Y is positive, that's up, and there's G. Now what we can also say here, um, this is the first quadrant, second, third, and fourth. Those are called quadrants, those are quarters. One, two, three, four. And then the lines that we have, the X line, we call that the X axis. And then the Y up and down is the Y axis. So that's a little review there. All right, and then the last problem here, or the last set, directions. Answer each question and then graph each line on the coordinate plane. Name three points on the line Y equals 3X minus 2. Now there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, probably the easiest way is to remember the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, where the b value is the y-intercept, that's negative 2, so on the y-axis we put a point at negative 2. m is the slope, I'm going to write that as 3 over 1, that's the number in front of x, and what that means is we rise and we run, it's the rate of change, so from here we rise 3, Run one, that's another point. We could do it again, rise three, run one. Notice that these are on the same point, so if I connect those, there's the line y equals three x minus two. Now it says name three points on the line. So I'm gonna write the coordinates. That's zero comma negative two, x comma y. This would be one one, right up, 
this would be 2, 4. x, y, 2 is positive, and then up 4 is positive. Those are four points. Now we could have put more points on here if we wanted to. The other way you could have done this without graphing is you could have taken an x value and substituted it into the equation. So for example, if I took 2 for x, I'll do it over here. If x is 2, then y equals 3 times 2 minus 2. Well, that's 6 minus 2, which is 4. So when x is 2, y is 4. Uh, for number 5, name three points on the line x equals 4. x equals a number is always a vertical line. So I would go to x-axis. Here's 4. I'll use red. I'll draw a vertical line. There's x equals 4. Now, to name three points, I mean, here's a point, here's a point, here's a point. Okay, there's a lot of points I could put. Uh, this one is 4 comma 0. This is, here is 4 comma 1. Here is right 4 down 2, so 4 comma negative 2. And then the last one, name three points on the line y equals negative 5. y equals a number is a horizontal line. So on the y-axis, here is negative 5. There's the line. Again, I'll pick three points. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's see, this one would be, x would be negative 4, and then down 5, negative 4, negative 5. This is 0, comma, negative 5. It's on the y-axis. And then this point is right 3, down 5. Right is positive, down is negative. And that is the end of the notes.